Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting knife right here. This is the CRKT Panache. Um, very interesting knife, and uh, you know, yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look. But first off, in the name of full disclosure, this guy was actually sent to me by CRKT themselves. I've talked to them, as always, repeatedly, and told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. My call it a gem, my call it junk. They've still sent it along, and I've called things both. So, nevertheless, um, uh, we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let this affect the nature or substance of my review, but nonetheless, um, th th there you go, that's your full disclosure for it. Um, next thing, uh, let's do some size comparison real quick. This is not a small knife um, whatsoever. Um, first off, I'll actually go ahead and measure up the blade real quick. What we'll see is this guy comes in around 3.75, maybe 3.6 inches. This is a pretty big knife right here. Um, put it down on the table next to your Spydeco Delica, next to your Ontario Rat number one, number two, I'm sorry, this is their number two. Um, and so we can see here, this is this is large. Um, it is large and in charge. Actually, I don't know if it's in charge or not, but I, you know, I didn't ask the, uh, the the knives in the vicinity. But nevertheless, it could well be. Um, and here it is against the Spyderco PM2. So yeah, big. Big and uh, absolutely a large freaking pocket knife right here. So um, there you go. Next thing, uh, unfortunately, this is a limited edition. And although I'm trying to cut back on limited editions in my channel, um, nevertheless, um, this is one of them. And at the time of filming, they were still pretty readily available. So I figured I'd go ahead with that. Then finally, um, although a lot of people wouldn't necessarily guess it, this is a Ken Onion design. This is a, uh, a CRKT knife by Ken Onion, um, even though it is very much outside of his conventional style. So um, th that is definitely something to keep in mind. So let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your uh, CRKT panache right here. So on the good side, to start with, um, I actually do like a good bolster lock. Now, look, uh, titanium flipper frame locks is sort of overplayed at the moment, but having the uh, the G10 bolster here is actually kind of a nice thing. The biggest reason for that is that when you have your fingers, because as you're holding the knife to flip it, you're naturally going to have your fingers resting something like this. But right now, they are resting on the, the, the bolster itself rather than in a conventional frame lock like this uh, Ferrum Forge uh, uh, CEO, no, I'm sorry, executive, uh, sorry, you got CRKT on the mind here, where your fingers are going to be resting on the lock bar, which increases lock bar tension, can cause some trouble. A bolster lock is going to be a lot less, uh, a lot more resistant, that is, to the um, overall nature of the... Uh Vega positioning. So that's something that's, uh, I do appreciate that, and it adds a little bit of something here. Um, next thing, this guy has actually some nice variation in surface finishes. You have, for instance, a relatively brushed, almost a borderline satiny sort of finish on the blade itself. You have what appears to almost be a coating or a painted something, or maybe just a very different blast finish on the inside of this blade here. So that's something. You have the uh, relatively dark, uh, what looks to be, again, blasted uh, finish, or maybe it's just a different approach. Here, you've got a relatively polished um, sort of machine satin thing going on here. Then you've got something different in the pivot altogether. And then you've got a shiny chrome on the uh, clip there. We'll come back to the clip later, but um, it has a variety of surface finishes and each of them is actually reasonably well done. I can't say I'm, I'm bent out of shape about any of these surface finishes and each one has some unique elements to it. So that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, let's. Um, this has a very solid action here. Um, as we can see here, I'm going to uh, deploy this with zero wrist at all. Yeah, absolutely, 100% reliably deploys. The detent on this guy is good to go. It fires reliably and happily. It's not the smoothest knife ever. It's got a fair amount of sort of rolling resistance to it, but at the same time, uh, with the blade being as heavy as it is, it's not a particularly bad action in any way, shape, or form. And it is a very reliable detent, so you can't argue with that particularly. It also thunks shut in a very interesting and satisfying way. You can kind of hear it, just like... Yeah, it's kind of like a thump. Oh, yeah, we're, we're closed now, so that's kind of cool. Next thing, this is a seriously textured pocket knife. I actually did an experiment where I posted pictures of this with the uh, CRKT logo. I posted a picture of it looking a lot like this and said, who made this knife? You know, well, well, tell me about this knife. And most people actually said Hindera knives, Rick Hindera. And that's actually a pretty good guess because it's textured like freaking crazy. Um, and because it's kind of a, a little bit of an aggro style shape. Um, but I think a lot of people were picking up on the amount of texturing that's going on here. And I, I can see that. Um, this is a, and I say that as a compliment, by the way. Um, Hindera is a master of texturing, in some cases even over texturing, but this is uh, very solidly in the hand right here. Not only do you have, for instance, the finger choil, then this little area, then this secondary little thing, but you have all of the various grip it here. This is a knife that you could carry into the Vaseline factory with absolutely no concern whatsoever, and, and everything would work just beautifully. A uh, good knife for the oil field, so to speak, and so that, that that's a nice thing, um, provided, of course, that your finger fits well into the, uh, the, the finger choil there.
That's, uh, it works great for me, but it might not for others. So um, th th that's a nice thing. Next thing, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, this is CRKT. This is a company that has predominantly focused on knives that are uh, relatively inexpensive. Uh, where is it a relatively inexpensive CRKT? Can't be a relatively inexpensive cricket. Um, I mean, well, okay, uh, the, right here, this is the, the, the Cricut Slack, and this isn't a terribly, I forget the exact price, but a lot of their stuff tends to be a little bit lower in the market. A lot of their stuff tends to target relatively new collectors, or, for instance, collectors with relatively lower budgets. That's a fine thing to do. But it's nice to see them pushing the high end. This is actually a well-made knife. Uh, whatever factory is doing this for CRKT is doing substantially good work. There are some improvements that could certainly be made. And, you know, most of those are kind of down to the design. I think the angularity of it. But nevertheless, I'm actually pretty impressed with the overall build and construction on this guy. And I do love seeing CRKT expanding on that higher end. So that's good. And then finally, on the good side... So this knife looks like it would be about as ergonomic as a, you know, a, a, a bucket of nails. Um, but in fact, actually, once you get it into the hand, once you get it in the proper position, this works really well. This is actually quite nice in the hand once you kind of get your hand in that place. Um, it's not the most ergonomic knife I've ever handled, but I'll say, you know, for being as angular as being as, you know, having all of these sharp looking edges on there, um, once you get this guy into the actual cutting position, it's surprisingly good to go. And I appreciate that very much. Um, and frankly, it surprised me very much. I remember, you know, handling this, I think at the CRKT booth and just saying, oh, wow, how the heck is this fit in the hand? And it, it worked. And that's kind of cool. So um, at least to me, all of that is the good. It's weirdly ergonomic in the hand. Um, I do love seeing CRKT pushing these higher end pieces at 300 bucks here. The, 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 that's definitely their higher end. I like seeing the texturing here. It's got a solid action, some nice variation in surface finishing. And I do like a, lo a good bolster lock. On the great side, um, to me at least, what's most interesting about this knife is the intricacy here. There is a lot of machine time involved, ranging from this little area inside the blade here, where we have actual checkering going on here. We've got the G10 that's been milled out. We have these pockets milled in for the G10 and with very tight tolerances. We've got a nice little backspacer in the back, again, with more texturing. And actually, it's a very unobtrusive backspacer that's actually pretty comfortable in the hand as you flip in this guy, at least for my hands. And then around the entire outside of it, we have this weird stepping pattern here, which I think is purely aesthetic. I can't think of any reason, aside from a little bit of gription, um, to, to do this. But you know what? It looks really good. And then on the inside here, we've got the lock bar uh, insert area, which is you can kind of see, I hope, in there. Let me grab my flashlight. Hopefully show this off a little bit better. Um, because they've got this stepping on the outside and an internal lock bar relief, which again is a nice little trick I could have pointed out there. They've got a, a very interesting lock bar relief set up in there. So I, I have to say, I'm actually pretty impressed with the overall machining on this guy. This is this spent a lot of time on some machines, and this intricacy is a ways above anything I've seen out of CRKT, frankly, ever. I mean, one could argue that it's got some similarities in its approach to the um, M390, well, actually to the CRKT crossbones generally by Jeff Park, but um, the, the, the this is really a, a more intricate thing than any of those things. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of that, and to me at least that's what's great is the amount of machine time. On the bad side, to start with price on this guy, so it's 300 bucks, and I feel pretty neutral about that. You know, yes, certainly if this were being made by a relatively unknown Chinese maker, we could probably see this down at like 200 bucks or something like that. Um, th th That's definitely true, but the thing is, it's a nice design, it's a unique design, it's a design by a well-known designer, and um, there's nothing that's, you know, substantially wrong here in terms of, you know, overall construction. A couple of nitpicks and then a couple of issues that are... Uh but, you know, overall, I, I feel like they're not ripping my face off here. And frankly, I want to support, and this might be a bias, you're welcome to, but I really want to support them getting into the higher end because I want to see some of their classical pieces redone on the higher end because I think that could be something that's really, really compelling for uh, knife consumers overall, and especially collectors who started off with CRKT but want to move up higher. I'm going to keep beating that drum, but damn it, it's an important drum to beat. So I think that the price on this guy is a little up there, certainly, and it's going to put it out of range for a bunch of people, and there are going to be a subset of people who are like, oh my god, CRKT, 300 bucks, no, but I think it's important that they do expand upwards, and they do they do show the world that they can make knives that are reasonably well done up there. Um, next thing, the, this blade area here, when I first took a look at this, my, my immediate thought was like, oh cool, it's like an area where you can use your finger to flick this guy out. Um, the thing is, though, this is kind of hidden. This little patch here isn't really accessible to your index finger or, frankly, your thumb, so in practice, this turns out to 
to be just ornamental. If you look at this as being like a unique finger flicker, um, that's not the way that this is designed. And this, frankly, isn't deep enough that I really, unless I had, you know, adamantium freaking fingernails, like saber tooth or something, I don't think I could get in there. And that would be, you know, that, that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but that's purely cosmetic. Next thing, there are a couple of nitpicks here. Relative to a lot of what's coming out of, uh, you know, Chinese factories these days, there are a couple of things missing. Um, this has got no detent ramp, which is a little bit of a minor issue here. Um, the, the, it has a no lock bar insert. It has a no lock bar insert. It has no lock bar insert. Um, it is just a piece of titanium here. Um, and that's not necessarily great. And actually, that has led to a little bit of lock stick on this guy. You can kind of hear it each time I unlock it. It's not like, frankly, this is just on the borderline of like, I, do I need to comment on this lock stick? But the thing is, if I didn't, people would say, oh my god, you you the bias, you know, you know that it, it's not problematic lock stick particularly, but it, it's it is there, and so moving to a lock bar in so would probably help that a little bit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, the, the finger choil is also a little bit on the small side. I have smaller hands than most, and it works pretty well for my index finger, and it even goes up to my index finger. But when I get the thumb in there. And given you would never ever use a finger choil like this, but I'm just saying, if you got bigger fingers, this choil might not be enough for you. You might have to either, you know, round this out a little bit further or something like that. Um, so you do want to keep in mind that that's a relatively small thing. There are a couple of little um, finishing issues actually here. One of them is right here on this, uh, on the, 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 the pivot here. Um, some of what you see in there, by the way, is just oil soaking out of the pivot there because Exxon Shabazz has had his way with it. But this little area right here, as well as sort of an accompanying... I don't know what that's about. Um, I don't know if it was just an area where they didn't blast it or an area where they did blast it or something like that. But for whatever reason, there is this dark spot on this pivot that is just not coming out. For whatever reason happened there, that ain't changing. And, I, you know, I've tried a couple of things to get that. You know, I hit it with a little bit of scotch bright. I hit it with some with various detergents, figuring there might be something on there. Whatever it is, there there is some bit of gunk on there, and that is not something too impressive to come from the factory with. Um, Next thing, this guy... Oh, and the other thing I wanted to highlight is right here. It looks like as they were uh, doing some part of the process here, because this little line here feels like it's designed, right? It feels like this should match this. But at some point in time in the process, you can see that they took a little bit too much metal here and then smoothed that out. Um, and as a result, you have something that should be a nice matching line that ends up not matching. And I don't super love that. Um, they, it kind of feels like somebody screwed up, covered it up, and then figured, oh, no one's going to notice, and then they sent it to Nick Shabazz, who's going to notice. But nevertheless, um, those things aren't the end of the world, but if you're getting up into 300 bucks, they're getting to be bigger issues. Um, next thing, this is a relatively heavy knife. I'll throw this guy up on the scale here and uh, go ahead, and uh, this guy measures in at uh, 5.78 ounces for about 3.6 inches of blade. That's a fair amount of weight. This is not a lightweight knife whatsoever. It's got these nice, big, thick titanium scales. And given they've removed a lot of titanium here and replaced with G10, but still, um, this is still a heavy knife. Um, even just the thickness of the stock makes this guy, this is kind of a beast at some level. It's a very large knife too. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's not necessarily a lightweight to carry around. Next thing, um, this guy does have some sharper corners on it. Um, you know, particularly this little area right here at the top, where we go from this um, nice hands sanded finish all the way down to this area. These parts down here are not particularly sharp, but this last transition is. And that would make sense if they blasted the handles and then um, kind of did a, uh, well, I guess in this case it would have been this direction, and, and then got this up to that nice satin on a belt. Um, you would end up with these sharper edges up here, but these definitely are a little bit sharp. Similarly, the top of the blade is a little bit sharp, the sides of the flip -a tab. It just feels like this entire knife could definitely use either a little time in the tumbler or a visit from the chamfering fairy. Either one would would have made this, but this could just use a little tiny bit of melting to make it a little bit more comfortable in the hand during manipulation. Like I said, the, the magic of this thing is once you actually have it in hand, it's actually quite comfortable, but in the process of getting it there, there are lots of little sharp edges here, um, and th those are definitely things they could improve. Next thing, um, is kind of related to that, but like I said, this is a knife that is not super comfortable to handle, even though it's perfectly comfortable to use. It's a very weird dichotomy, and I think it boils down to the ergonomics being designed, and more specifically, the sharp edges being designed to disappear in one grip, but not in others. And so as a result, um, it's not as comfortable in a hammer grip for me as it is in a saber grip. If I'm not using the, and you know, saber grip with a finger choil is a little weird, especially with this small choil, but, uh, I'm sorry, hammer grip 
method, but nonetheless, um, this is really sort of designed for one grip, and outside of that, it, all those sharp edges start to add up. Then finally, on the bad side, the clip on this guy feels a bit like an afterthought. I can kind of see what they're going for here with this diamond plate sort of thing, but it's at the wrong angle for the rest, and it really feels like they had a bucket of these clips left over from another project, and they said, well, hey, um, hmm... Let's just throw it on the panache. Hey, it'll add a little panache to it, right? And uh, unfortunately, although it's a fine clip, it works well. It is directly over the texturing, which makes it a little bit trickier. Um, but it, it just, it feels like it's sort of out of place on a knife that is over-machined everywhere else to just throw like, ah! put a clip on it and they call it a day i'm not advocating that they have done you know a full but even just like the finishing of the clip looks entirely different than everything else it really just feels like i put another clip from another knife onto this guy and so to me at least all that's the bad is that the clip feels like an afterthought it's got kind of weird ergos in that it's great when you're using it in a saber or uh in a hammer grip that it no saber grip damn it um it's got uh but it's a little painful elsewhere it's got some sharp corners in a bunch of places here it's pretty heavy some little finishing issues a couple of nip picks and uh, the blade groove doesn't do anything, and the price is sort of neutral. Two ugly issues here. Start off with, um, I already mentioned the limited edition thing. Now, look, my problem is not with CRKT making these in limited numbers at first. I, I totally get that. I, I wouldn't want to jump into it whole hog and say, you know, oh, make 11 billion of them um, and just hope that they all sell. That, 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 that That's fine. You know, if you sell out for a little while, you can make more. But that's the thing. When you put these little magical numbers on the blade, you are committing to not make more. And I don't know that the maker, you know, the collector's market for high-end CRKT AT collectors is such that there were going to be people out there going, oh my god, there are only 550 of these. And so you end up with a limited edition that doesn't really have any of the upsides because it's not super collectible, but it has all the downsides, meaning that if, if this were to become a very popular knife, you wouldn't be able to get enough of them. So I, at the moment, they're in stock, and so it's okay, I guess, but honestly, I just wish that they would make relatively few of them at first, and then if they sell out, make a bunch freaking more. That way the, the model can stick around for a long time, and this isn't going to be a deadweight review in like six months when they all sell out. So, um, you know, that's that's a thing. Then finally on the bad side, or I'm sorry, on the ugly front, um, the edge on this guy is quite thick. Unfortunately, I, I feel like um, this is a combination of having relatively thick stock and a relatively low grind on this guy, a saber grind on this rather than a full flat on the entire blade. And this is not a hollow grind at all. Um, this is just a, a flat grind. And as a result, this comes out very thick behind the edge. Um, this is not a very good cutting tool. You can see right there. I mean, despite my efforts to kind of pause, it just, it doesn't cut all that effectively in paper. I mean, okay. To, to, to be fair, you can cut open the box. You can open the envelope, but it's a knife that tears a little bit more than it cuts. This is definitely a very thick behind the edge sort of knife. And honestly, that's disappointing. I sort of feel like uh, they're not done yet. They didn't finish grinding this blade. They just needed to go a little bit more serious and then they would have had a very nice cutting tool. But as it stands, unfortunately, with the edge being relatively thick here, and I'm, I'm definitely beating them up a little bit on this, but it's been a repeated issue that I've seen from them. Um, I, I want to see those ground a little bit better. I want to see them either go hollow or I want to see them just take it a little bit more acute or use thinner stock something like that because unfortunately this ends up being a tool that although it's going to be great for you know prying and hard UC sorts of things um isn't just as good for isn't as good for everyday cutting and so I'm, I'm definitely disappointed in that and uh that's the, the the ugliest thing to me about this this knife would be a lot better if this were a super thin slicey well not necessarily super thin blade but just if it were ground to cut just a little bit better that would be much more impressive to me so to me at least that's what's ugly is that it's got a very thick edge and they went the limited edition route when they really don't need to Final conclusion. This is a weird knife at some level, but it's also, I can see some good here. I mean, it's big, it's beefy, which is going to appeal to some folks. It's pretty unique looking. They really aren't, I mean, the only other person doing anything like this stepping is like Brian Ty, but his tends to be a little weirder. Um, it's got, it's uh, got a very nice action, a serious texturing on this guy, solid ergos, a lot of intricate machining, and it represents a very nice thing from CRKT, but it's also big, heavy. It's got some nitpicks, some finish issues, some serious weight to it, some sharp edges, odd goes the, the clip is a little lazy it's limited for some damn reason and unfortunately they didn't quite finish grinding it um but nevertheless um it, it is it's got some compelling elements to it i'm actually a little bit torn because at some level it is kind of cool it, it's a nice knife it's a very real level and in a lot of ways this is a very compelling piece coming out of crkt this is not and I, what i mean by that is that generally speaking their stuff is have they well they, they're aiming for much lower price points and so they end up with much lower quality this is 
he's actually quite up, up there for the in terms of what they've been doing in the past. So I appreciate that. And it is weird. It's kind of the strange stuff that CRKT most often does and does most compellingly. I mean, if we think about CRKT, they are a company who just does weird stuff randomly. Um, and that's kind of cool. And I appreciate that. This is another weird thing that they did. And they did it on the high end, which is awesome. So I, there is a lot to love about this guy. But at another, another level, it's got a number of flaws that I think will take it off the table for a bunch of folks, particularly folks who are fans of Thin Edges. Or, um, you know, I just, I, I can see that being a little bit of an issue. So ultimately, I think the big question for, for this knife is you. It's like, if you look at this knife and you think, like, whoa, holy crap, I want one. Is amazing. This is the best thing ever. Then do it. Great. You're going to love it. Um, and if you don't like it, if you don't love the design, if there's some part of this that isn't appealing to you, then you're probably not going to like this guy more. Uh, but the, the, the biggest news here, and it's not really news, I guess, but the biggest thing to me here is that I'm glad to see it happening. I've said this over and over again. I want to see CRKT keep working on the high end. My reason for this is very simple. And like I said, they have so many great designs out there. I'm going to go on ahead and just coincidentally place a Graham Razel down on the table there. But they have so many great designs out there. So many great designs out there that could really use this kind of a high-end treatment. And so seeing this guy on the high end from them is just like, oh... Good. I'm so glad they're able to do that. Right now, a lot of people aren't looking to them on the higher end. And in fact, when I, I mentioned in my post, I said, you know, this is a very interesting $300 frame lock. Not one person who didn't already know the model mentioned CRKT, and that's kind of a problem for them, right? Right now, they're not thought of as doing higher end stuff. But by doing things like this, by doing things that are mostly good, and by continuing to refine future work, they are going to get that reputation. They, they keep working with good factories like this. They will work out those kinks. They will figure that out and they will become a company that also is known for higher end stuff. And that is a big win for collectors because if they can make stuff that is, you know, available on the lower end and on the higher end, that's absolutely amazing. And so to me, at least I, the knife itself is it, it's fine. I can see some people loving it. I can see some people not loving it. It's not for me. It's a little big, heavy, whatever. but at the same time, I'm thrilled to see it happening. And I think it represents some very, very nice progress over there at CRKT. So anyways, there you go. Hope this you found uh, hope this you found interesting Yoda I am and that you have yourself sorry I had to end this review with a little Star Wars panache uh, anyways I uh, hope you found this interesting to you and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day bye now.